welcome to episode three of the Critical Coach podcast, which is now available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. In this episode, I'll review Daniel Coyle's book, The Talent Code, published in 2010. Any links referenced in the podcast are in the episode's description. I recently finished reading The Talent Code by Daniel Coyle. The book was lent to me by a friend after we'd been talking about skill development. I had no idea who Daniel Coyle was and no particular knowledge of the book itself. The title sounded vaguely familiar, but that was it. So what's it all about, and is it any good? The book's central premise is made clear in its subtitle. Greatness isn't born, it's grown. To substantiate that claim, Coyle looks at several factors. Myelin and deep practice, talent hotbeds, and coaching. Coyle gushes about myelin from cover to cover, but what is it? Myelin is a substance that wraps itself around nerves, insulating them in the process. That insulation helps electrical impulses to travel more efficiently and accurately throughout the nervous system. In order to increase layers of myelin, the neural circuits they insulate need to be used, i.e. practice must occur. More practice means more myelin, which means more efficient execution of the relevant circuit. The idea that practice improves performance is unremarkable, but that's not what Coyle's writing about. Instead, he focuses on what he calls deep practice, a collection of methods that optimize myelin production. I won't list them all here, but I will address them in a subsequent article on deep practice and its relevance to strength and conditioning. Next up are talent hotbeds, places with an outsized quantity of success stories. There's several mentioned within the book, but they're all getting at the same point. Talent hotbeds maintain long-term engagement while enabling the methods of deep practice. Finally, we come to great coaching which falls under the same banner as talent hotbeds. They facilitate long-term engagement while using the methods of deep practice. At face value, it's fair to assume that most, if not all, of those claims are uncontroversial. And for the most part, that's true. But let's revisit the talent code's central premise. Although worded differently, Coyle's premise is that nurture trumps nature. If nurture is handled appropriately, greatness can be achieved by anyone, anywhere. It's an incredibly appealing idea that suggests we are the masters of our own fate, and that with sufficient time, effort, and appropriate training, we can do anything. There's only one problem. It's not true. Quell's premise is as old as Aristotle, and commonly known as tabula rasa, or the blank slate. Blank slate theory assumes that we are all born equal, and who we become is solely the result of environmental factors. However, the discovery of heritable and familial genetic traits annihilates the blank slate concept. The truth between nature and nurture lies somewhere in the middle. Genetics loads the gun, environment pulls the trigger. While Aristotle can be forgiven on the basis of ignorance, Coyle can't. Early in his story, Coyle spends time with scientists researching myelin and its effects. Furthermore, the latter part of the book includes multiple references to peer-reviewed scholarship. As a result, Coyle effectively shoots his only defense, that of ignorance, in the foot. Either he failed to consider the limited potential of environmental factors, or chose to exclude them. And I'm leaning towards the latter, as it would make his book and its claims far less spectacular and more difficult to market. Saying greatness might be born or grown, or a bit of both, it depends, doesn't have the same effect, does it? That's not to say that myelin or deep practice don't matter. They do. A lot. But Coyle leaves himself no wiggle room and deceives the reader through sins of omission. He portrays the development of myelin through deep practice, facilitated by talent hotbeds and great coaching, as a silver bullet for greatness. In myelin, Coyle has found a hammer and proceeds to treat everything as a nail. Now, is there any evidence that there's more to greatness than myelin? Yes. In the episode's description, there's a link to Bill James' spectacular article about why birth month matters in Major League Baseball. But what about other pursuits like powerlifting? Again, yes. Tom Purvis has a great pair of videos explaining how chest thickness affects depth in the bench press. Links in the description. A mile in deep practice, talent-fostering environments, and great coaching relevant to achievement. Absolutely but they're by no means a silver bullet. 
After all of that, I still need to answer the second question from my introduction. Is the book any good? Yes, sort of. The information about myelin and deep practice is really useful, as is the information about how environment and coaching can optimize long-term development of talent. But the talent code is also too long and poorly written. It's not that the book itself is long, it's not. It's only 221 pages, but it's far longer than necessary to make its point. A lot of it felt like padding. The same story is told again and again, merely changing the sport and location. If you're into people's stories, you might enjoy that, but I couldn't care less. If I want to hear someone's exceptional story, I'll watch a documentary or read a biography. The other part that frustrated me was the writing. It drove me up the fucking wall. Coyle is seemingly unable to help himself when it comes to grandiose descriptions. Furthermore, Coyle and his editor decided to pepper the entire book with footnotes that provide more anecdotal information, which doesn't move the book forward. If it's important, include it in the main story. Otherwise, don't distract me with extraneous information. If you're interested in Coyle's many stories about people learning, where they learn, and who teaches them, read the book. If, like me, you just want the parts that'll make you a better coach, Google the Talent Code Summary. Thanks for listening. If you've got any questions or comments, you can find me on Twitter at critical underscore coach, on Facebook at the critical coach, all one word, and on Instagram as the underscore critical underscore coach. 